Oh, didn't see you were there. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm 3D Caleb, and I was just checking out this game. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's called Magic Carpet, and I think I was just terrorizing these people in these tents, but um, I'll, I'll give them a, a break for now. But I'm checking this out because I wanted to see what, you know, really impressive 3D games that were back, you know, came back out in the 90s. And this was one of them. I've never played it before at all, but I love the look of it. Uh, the little wiggling textures, kind of like that PlayStation 1 because it doesn't have true perspective correct texture mapping. So the textures kind of get a little bit wobbly. But it's got a fantastic look to it. The, the, the billboarded like sprite people that always follow you and then very low polygon, but you know, my favorite, favorite type of stuff. So been having some fun with this and I got some speakers now. And I wanted to show something real time 3D because the, the thing I've been working on this week was building a rasterizer and it's um, different than what I was doing last week, which is, you know, the ray tracer, which I finished that up. And to make sure I'm still in the shot here. Ugh, so this week doing the, the rasterizer and I made some progress on it. Still going through, still going through this great book. If we can see it, my watch is my monitor here. Hopefully you can see this, it's a good book. And I'll show you pretty soon what I've been programming. I got the, the code ready on my compact flash card. So we're ready to, Kelly, ready to load it up and compile it using the Wat, open Wattcom compiler and show you a little bit of, you know, what I've been able to achieve this week. And as I show you what I've done so far this week on the rasterizer, I'll explain, you know, what is that and what you're seeing here. And I think I just died. It looks like I just died, but this game is using a rasterization to draw what you're currently seeing. You know, this, 3D world is somehow being projected onto a two-dimensional surface. So we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about that when I um, show you what I've got running so far. Well, let's get out of DOS and get back into the Windows 3.1. Okay, I don't think I need to run the full Wattcom integrated development environment. I'm just gonna go into the spacebar. Don't really I'm gonna go into raster raster here and I'm gonna see if I can just run WMAK compile it. We are compiling the code right now. Ta-da! There we go. There's the beautiful scene. You can see we got a cube here. You know, just a quad, a, a quadrangle cube. And then you got these cubes and these got triangles, as you can see. And then also some fun colors and even some fancy rotations on there. Then you got this shaded triangle right here. has a nice green to black shading going on. So this is demonstrating that I can, of course, draw lines, can draw triangles, and then can connect triangles together to form a shape and even move them around in the world. And they look like they have depth and they're 3D, even though they're being drawn on just a flat screen, somehow tricks our brain and we see a 3D object, even though it's just a big grid of uh, square pixels. If you're wondering what a rasterizer even is, if that's a you know, new term for you. I'll go ahead and hopefully try to explain that. So basically a rasterizer converts mathematical shapes like triangles, for example, in our case, into actual pixels on your screen. The term raster refers to the grid of pixels that make up your display, similar to how an old TV would scan line by line to create an image. In 3D games, Everything you see is made of triangles. They can make any shape. They're the perfect shape, I would say, because it's the least amount of points to make a surface, very optimal for computers. The rasterizer's job is to take 3D triangles from the game world, project them 
on to the 2D screen, figure out which pixels need to be colored in, and then fill those pixels with the right colors. You can think of it like drawing a triangle on graph paper, if you've ever used graph paper, and you have to decide what squares to fill in to best represent the triangle shape. A rasterizer does this automatically millions of times per second to create the 3D graphics you see in games. So the, the world we're looking at is an approximation of where these shapes are, because you can see the little inefficiencies here, the, the, the stair stepping, because the, the resolution is so low, you know, on this, uh, in this program, on this program, you know, it's 320 by 200 in that special mode 13H that we talked about in the last video. So it's trying to do its best with this, you know, square pixels all across the screen. It's, it's trying to do its best to draw these shapes in this world, but it, you know, you can see the imperfections, but this, these imperfections don't really get in the way. The higher the resolution that monitors and graphics cards have been able to handle, they basically become invisible now, um, especially if you're looking at a, a game running in 4K, <laughs> you know, everything looks perfect, but you can really notice here, because there's a bigger pixels or there's less pixels, so you see more of the stair stepping. So it's pretty incredible that you can take 3D objects, they're, you know, they're they have the, the, the 3D data that's represented in the program and projected onto a flat screen. So it's pretty incredible. So yeah, it's all triangles. Triangles can make any shape and there's, there's kind of the perfect shape. There have been some systems that use quadrangles um, like the Sega Saturn, but it's generally, generally not very common. It's triangles all the way. Hope you enjoyed getting to see what I built this week on the screen. Well, it was on the screen. Some nice colorful cubes. And it's, a, it's an exciting start because with those algorithms that I'm programming, you can eventually make rich worlds with moving cubes, texture, lighting, all those things that add that immersive and immersiveness and realism to the game. And it's really exciting. It's one of my favorite things to uh, work on and I love 3D graphics. So I'm glad to be doing it on a simple, simpler system where I have a simpler environment to work on and I don't have a fancy 3D graphics card to help me accelerate my, my uh, 3D math. I believe that's it for this video. I am gonna continue on to the second part of, of the book, getting uh, the rest of the, the, the rasterizer uh, done, you know, you have the uh, hidden surface removal, you know, sorting polygons, you got some, you know, tricky problems to overcome, which are fascinating issues that you face. And there's, of course, a solution because this stuff has been figured out by many people for a long time. So you're not having to reinvent the wheel or anything. And that that scene that I'm going to be rebuilding is the one right here. You can see that. You can see the rasterized version and the ray trace version. Now, the interesting thing about the rasterized version, it, it can run way faster. So you could actually have that real time where you could move around smoothly. The ray tracer one just, it's very precise and beautiful, but it's way too accurate and it's very slow. Now, computers today are getting better where they actually can do, where they're getting closer to real time ray tracing. And I mean real time where it's you can draw so many frames so fast that it looks to animate smoothly. It's getting there, but this machine, there's no way. So this will be much faster, but they look kind of similar. It's, it's a little rougher, but it's an approximation of this, but it still looks good. So if you're making a game, you know, that looked like this, well, you could still make it interesting and inter interact, um, interactable and fun or scary or whatever you're, you'd be making <laughs> with 3D triangles. So I will try to update next week with the latest progress. Maybe I'll get to that point where I can show the, the ray traced sphere scene, but now being rendered with a rasterizer, the rasterizer technique. And you can see the little, the little uh, subtle differences too, but it'll be fun. And then I have some um, ideas for a future project after this book to work on. And I'm thinking more about that and I will eventually, eventually announce what that project is. And I'm excited about it. And hopefully you uh, all will enjoy following along as I build this 3D application for MS-DOS. Um, is it raining outside? Okay, well, thank you for watching again. And this time I'm not going to forget the licorice.
Mm, that's pretty stale. Bye.